Welcome everybody, good morning. I'm Alexander Lenz, head of content of WatchAdvisor.com. I am at the SIHH 2019 at the booth of IWC Schiffhausen and with me is Christopher. Good morning. Good morning, Christopher. How, How are, are you? you? I'm great. How are you? Are you informed? Absolutely. Ready? No, absolutely. It's been a fantastic fair so far. Great. So, um, ready for departure? Absolutely ready for departure. Cleared for takeoff? Then all good. All India good. Whiskey Charlie, good to go. Okay. <laughs> um, you have a theme this year that is very particular and it's very linked to the brand, very linked to the history of the brand that you started in 1936 with your pilot's watches. You're going to let a Spitfire fly around the world. It's absolutely. Sounds pretty weird. <laughs> Well, it, it may sound weird, but I think it makes absolute sense because the Spitfire is one of the iconic aircraft yeah. design in the history of aviation. It's also, I think, essentially a racing car for the skies. You know, oh, it's well, designer. That's well said. Reginald Mitchell, he came from the background of air racing. He made racing planes for such awards as the Schneider Trophy for the seaplanes. And when you look at the, the silhouette, the power, the handling, that elliptical wind shake, and how much pilots love to fly the Spitfire, that really is a driver's car. It's, it's, a, it's a racing car for the Would skies. you compare it to an AMG? Mercedes? I would compare it to a Silver Arrow, for sure. I mean, yeah. the same era, same engineering that goes into it, that yeah. engine and aero combination that yeah. you have with yeah. handling, and then, of course, the great pilots who pilot these races and, and who are ready for great adventure. And for us, really, the Spitfire is a story that has not been told enough to the wider world. And the idea of the Silver Spitfire is really to talk about the engineering story and inspire people by this aircraft design by taking all the markings off, polishing it, turning it to a silver condition and then flying it around the world. The plane would take off in... Uh, Goodwood. In Goodwood. Yeah. And then really try with all the... All Let's say that's, that's not that's no de icing. There's yeah. no there's no. Let's say no, the plane is pretty. Remember. Has to fly on the visual conditions always. Absolutely. So it will be pretty challenging, I, I suppose. Absolutely. I mean, this was an agile fighter aircraft that was built for short reach, short distances, and of course, it was never intended to fly no. around the world in <laughs> yeah. different conditions. So there's no pressurized cabin. There's yeah. of course no heating, as you say, no de icing. We added additional fuel tanks, but original period correct fuel tanks to extend the range to at least 1,300 nautical miles okay but of course we expect that every 24 hour, uh, 24 hours something will need doing to the Spitfire's engine or all the other components is it so is the maintenance so uh, uh, intense it's I'm maintenance like... intense when you do a lot of hours with it it, okay. it handles beautifully but of course it's a 90% original 1943 condition Wow. we kept 90% of the fuselage panels original yeah we polished them but kept the patina kept the character yeah. and of course you know when you go to all the different climate zones salt water crossing the oceans all the rest of it we will see a lot of maintenance challenges on the way. The, fl uh, the plane will then uh, head through the world and uh, represent your story where? Yeah. In, so the, in the major countries? We're uh, going to all major countries. It's okay. over 26 countries we're going to with 55 to 60 stopovers depending on how it goes. As you said, flying in visual conditions only. And where we stop over we will inspire especially younger generations with the engineering story and really mm -hmm. preserve those skills because today we see that in watchmaking, unless we keep inspiring people to look after the mechanical skills it takes to make watch movements, to make aero mm -hmm. engines, to look after these aircraft, those skills will be lost forever. And this project aims to yeah, inspire. My words, uh, I always say, tell the story what's the, that's behind and give people the real, the real Absolutely. information and then Absolutely. the price or all these discussions are no longer, no longer there because it's an emotional product and yeah. what you're doing is pure emotions. Huh? That's, Absolutely. That's really selling. Anybody who Couldn't has be this aircraft being fired up, you know, yeah. and have it in a low pass going past you at 300 miles an hour, yeah. it's just an amazing machine. Already when you when you uh, start the engine and the fire gets yes. out of the exhaust. Although I'm being told that for an accomplished pilot, this is a sign of lack of skill if it actually spits fire. Apparently you're not supposed to overcock the engine and <laughs> yeah. create that effect. <laughs> and that's where the name comes from, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah. I, I remember, but I read once that apparently Reginald Mitchell, who's not involved in the naming of the aircraft, when it turned out that the uh, um, the, the manufacturer is called a Spitfire. He said that's just the sort of bloody stupid name they would give it. <laughs> he don't, he weren't, wasn't quite pleased about that, but I think it turned out yeah. well in the end. Besides this, um, when we talk about the Spitfire collection, the Spitfire collection this year got much more technical for me. Yeah. So yeah. it turned back to be really an, a, um, a tool, a yes. tool watch probably for pilots. Yeah. And uh, my one thing that's uh, that's really uh, was interesting when I, when I first saw it, you using bronze. Yeah. Is it also uh, to add some more 
individual, uh, not individual value, but individual, um, yeah. uh, individual character to, character to the weapon. I think so, because um, when we look, we have two executions in the Spitfire line. You're right, it is all about that pure tool watch, that very classic pilot's watch, all slightly reduced diameters in the automatics and the ground chronographs. This is some, excuse me to interrupt yeah. you. I'm, I'm, I'm important, but reducing diameters. Yes. 41, double yeah. thumbs up. Yes. Because no, it, it wears really, really well. Yeah. And we have one execution which is really inspired by the cockpit instrument and the flight suit look, and it's in steel, black dial and green. And then the bronze cases with the browner, that warmer expression, they really aim to um, mimic what we have in the patina and that character and the memories of Spitfire and all the romance that goes around it. So in a sense, you can say that's one for the airfield and one more for the officers club in terms of its, its look and execution and the individual patina of the bronze, obviously a beautiful Yeah, we'll effect. turn any watch to an individual watch exactly. after a while. Exactly, and we're using a special bronze that is food hygiene rated, it's extremely hypoallergenic, we're using titanium case bags, so it wears extremely well as well. Mm. Um, your new manufacturing building is, yes. okay, is fully functional, everything's working, fully functional. you're happy, the production yes. is on, it's Yes, good. and we, we already rearranged parts of the assembly twice since we opened it, so that, <laughs> no, that flexibility yeah. notion that we were going for really, really pays off. Yeah. I think we're learning a lot more and a lot quicker how to improve our processes yeah. and now everybody working so closely together. For example, the uh, 3716 uh, Jubilee Edition Portuguese Chronograph, we're now assembling start to finish in one area. That okay. means all the different skill sets yeah. that are, are working directly together and any improvements we come up with can be implemented immediately mm. and that helps us a lot to, to improve it's, the way we do things. It's a gorgeous watch. Yes. I last year named it to be one of my 10 favorite watches. Yes. It's so, an old design. No, it's old. Why? Old. It's, that's it's the ultimate timeless. design. Yes, and absolutely. now fitted with your own uh, in-house movement, yes. I think that watch Beautiful. really got its bah, back. You know, it's back on the scene and Agreed. shines like a star. Yeah. Uh, the, the fact, uh, a lot of people when they watched my video with, with Christian Knob or yeah. the, my presentation said, okay, is it really true? Is IWC now really having an entire collection with in-house movements? Yes. Is it done? Can it's you done. just explain to our, our, our viewers once again yeah. from the CEO, confirm that it's really done? <laughs> it's done. So we really show the whole range of movements starting in the Spitfire Automatic with a 32 yeah. caliber in-house automatic, going then to the 69 caliber chronograph with the three counters and the day date. Yeah. Then onto the 82 automatic, which is a slightly smaller peloton winding bi-directional ceramic yeah. clicks, carrier movement for both the time zone and the UTC function, and the UTC is back, which I'm also very happy about yeah. on that 82 in-house. And then of course the 52 in-house caliber, seven days power reserve that powers perpetual calendar. So it's a full range yeah. from complicated perpetual calendar, just a single crown to the basic automatic. And we just want to showcase that we have the capacity to cover all those aspects. How long will it take you to bring a new movement or to say, okay, yeah. uh, the ramp up is done, uh, everything is on the flow, we can deliver what we what we plan. Mm. How long do you think it will take that you bring out your next in-house well, movement? And what, what would be a guess? In, what general, could it be? in general terms, it's a five-year development yeah, cycle I know. to develop. But a, I expect you to already work on it. Of course. So it's a <laughs> continuous five years rolling and uh, we'll see what happens. Right? So uh, you, ain't, you ain't giving me any hint what it could be Probably you're not quite yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. But you're working on, on you're working on a next. Of course. Okay. Always. And uh, the f uh, the the you're not no longer um, buying or, or getting movements from outside. You're really concentrating now no, and having it's, a it's always a mix. It's always a mix. But what we want to show is that IWC has the capacity and will make movements across the entire price range. Great. Christian. Uh, Christian. I say it was Christian. Christopher. Chris is for me. Chris is Chris. much easier. Yeah, Just I know Chris. Chris ah. Sorry, it's Christopher. Yeah. And it's Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Um, good luck for your little Spitfire. Have you been flying it? Well, we tried we in November. Tried, tried in November. Yeah. The cloud conditions were abysmal. This was exactly the kind of challenge. So I was lucky enough to fly the Mustang a couple of days later, but Spitfire will now do in spring. On there the is one, I think, with a double seat. Or? Yes, they yeah. have a twin seater. So. Of course. I want to do that once. So Absolutely. Must be, must be, must be amazing. It is. This thank you. Christopher, Thanks. thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, oh, good luck and uh, yeah, for your adventure also with the manufacturing, yeah. your movements. Keep those good things coming. Guys, thank you for watching. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our videos. And if you have any comments to make, use the comment section just underneath here. Bye-bye from the booth of IWC. Thank you. Bye-bye.